The Loft, a blueprint for style and a byword for space. With spectacular lofts like this in the centre of Manchester on the market for £600,000, it's a dream that few of us can ever attain. But the lure of the wooden beam and polished floorboard is such that even entry-level flats like this are in very hot demand. We're in town to try and find just such a space for Colin Gallimore and Anthony Freely. They have £135,000 to spend, but having been on the search for an incredible seven months, have yet to find anything they really like, which raises the question, are they being a bit fussy? Fussy? I, I, don't, I don't think we're fussy. <laughs> I think we've got particular yeah. needs and likes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're quite particular in what, what we're looking for, really. Yeah, definitely. So we set off with the boys to find out what those needs and likes might be. Colin, you brought us to this building here. It's a stunning looking building, but what is it about it that you really like? There's several things. I mean, the main thing is the actual size of the windows. I mean, one of the things that we're looking for is a property with big windows. Right. Why, a, why is that? A, because we can see what's going on outside, but mainly because it allows lots and lots of light lots of people to see yeah. you in. Exactly. Walking around in your little bikini outfits. Yeah, maybe. So you're looking for lots of light? Yeah. We like socialising, don't we? Yeah. Going out for a uh, swift half or two. I think you usually call it a couple of sherries, don't you? <laughs> um, we go to the gym. We go to the gym most days. Um, most of the time spent in the jacuzzi rather than in the gym. We particularly like this building, Kirsty. Um, it's all white, skinny one. It's an amazing building. Particularly like the mouldings, the gargoyles along the top. Yeah. What is it being tall and thin that you like, Anthony? A lot of people like to be able to they're not going to run up and down stairs. I think it's... Well, it stands out in Manchester. There's not many buildings that are three-storey. Okay. Like, that's almost townhouse proportions. Yeah. Yeah. And it really stands out in terms of architecture being yeah. something different. I think Anthony likes more um, architectural stuff. Um, and he likes the features to be there. Um, I think I'm more of a case of I can um, modify what we've got. Um, I don't know. Do you agree with that? To an extent, yeah. I think one of the differences about this new build is they've tried to do different things with it. It's not a square building. The windows are coming out of the building. You've got floor to ceiling windows. You've got the balconies as well, and lots of steel, which is sort of going back to the old stuff as well, something that's a little bit different. Yeah, the combination of brick and steel makes yeah. reference yes. to the old architecture. It's curved. Most buildings are square plot of land, square building. This is something different to offer, really. You're really into this, aren't you? <laughs> These guys really know their stuff. I mean, we're glad Kirsty and Phil are going to help us because we've been looking for seven months. Um, and I think because we've looked at that much stuff, it's very difficult to prioritise in terms of location and property and also investment. You get so, bogged down as well when you're looking. I think it's always good to have someone else's viewpoint, especially with them being the experts, experts. as it was. Yeah. <laughs> so it'd be interesting to see what they've got to say on the area. I think we'll give them a run for the money, though. So, time for a recap. OK, guys, let's really cut to the chase, see what we're looking for. As I understand it, new buildings are in, old buildings are in, big balconies are good news, huge windows have got to be in, mm -hmm. central location? Not too central. Because of the noise? The noise, exactly. In terms of old buildings, new buildings, I think more strain near to the old building. The, you were talking about the height of rooms? Height of rooms, yes. size of windows. OK. Detail. One bedroom? Yep. Um, anything I'm missing? View. We don't want to be that far away. Yeah. Okay. I think the answer is you're looking for the ultimate urban property. Yeah. Exactly. We've got a lot of work to do, so let's get out and see what's on the market. Get view. Yeah? Sure. Colin and Anthony have seen a lot already, so they know what they want, which always makes it easier for Kirsty and me. Their maximum budget is £135,000. This must include at least one bedroom but they will stretch to 140,000 if the property was to include a parking space for Colin's car. Armed with their extensive wish list, we selected seven properties for them to view. Hopefully, somewhere in there, we'll find their dream loft. The first of the properties is in the southern end of the city centre, in the old canal basin of Castlefield. Properties here are at the cheaper end of the market. Ours is in the very modern-sounding M3. It's an entirely new building and the new properties inside aren't finished. The only one we can see is the show flat. Now it's not called a show flat for nothing. You've got to bear in mind that the developer is bound to pick the nicest flat in the building. The one you end up buying could be darker, it could be noisier and it might not have as good a view. Always be sceptical. Well, what did you say about the ceiling height? 
This is big. It's one of your yeah. first, first requests. requirements. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's definitely got that. It really has. Mm -hmm. It really has. Now, up here... The downside of this property is that there's no proper bedroom. Like many lofts at this end of the market, the sleeping area is simply a raised platform or bed deck. Now, I know you said you didn't want a bed deck, but this is the biggest bed deck I've ever seen. Would you change your mind if there was a bed deck which was actually another space other than just a sleeping space? You could have this as a sort of sleeping, telewatching space. Really, it's not something we've uh, considered and looking at it, I don't think we'd really realistically consider purchasing Even it. if I said that you could do other things with this room? You're not going to come up just for two sets? It's too much of a compromise. It's, it's well, not really what we're looking for. I don't even want to go and look, honestly. There's no okay. windows, it's all one room, no. They're not called viewings for nothing, lads. It never hurts to have a quick look. The boys have just left. Clearly, they didn't like the bed deck. I thought it was quite a sensible use of space, but I think some of the use of space on this floor leaves a lot to be desired. Come and have a look at this. Kitchen works very well, but what's this? Wouldn't it have been simple? Cut a hole in there, put a breakfast by. Down here, what is currently wasted space, a couple of chairs, dining area. Very nice. Leaves the rest of this for your living room. If you've found a place like this that you like, speak to the developer, find out what improvements or alterations can be made to suit your own requirements. Well, that's the first one crossed off our list. Never mind, it's still early days. Yeah. Property number two is a one and a half bedroom apartment in this great looking ex-insurance building. Lancaster 80 is still under renovation, so Phil's on wet paint alert for his new suit and the boys need to use their imagination for this viewing. The reason why we brought you to this particular flat is because it's on the top floor, so it's nice and quiet. We've still got the ceiling height. It does fit in with your budget. As you can see, it's completely unfinished. It's the way they're selling them. Right. So you've got to use your imagination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The place you have to use your imagination more than any other is with the view, because there's a corner of a really beautiful view. What are those hills called? Oh, the Pennines. Pennines. Yeah. So you learn something yeah. new every day. Uh, but this building is, a, is about to be developed. Now, they've assured us that it's not going any higher than how it is now. Give us your impressions as you walk in and have a look around. need a lot of imagination for that. Mm. Big enough? It's just just adequate. Something bigger. Just adequate. I prefer yeah. larger living spaces than this, to be honest. The, the hallways we came through into the property is much larger. Yeah. And what about the kitchen? Is this big enough for you? This, I think, is the minimum height allowed. Because how tall are you, Phil? I'm just under six foot. And they all say that. <laughs> <laughs> we're just under Plus six that foot. Right. I mean, and that means we're this must tall, be... But it just feels very yeah, low. Yeah, it, does it feels feel very low. enclosed. Yeah. Yeah. We, we compromise on the bedroom size. If we're Not so much luck in the bedroom either. Small and rather revealing. I just spotted that window out there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to be overlooked in that. Yeah, that is very overlooked. Very overlooked, yeah. Come on, how did you get up in your bedroom? <laughs> Well, there were some good points, like the view, some bad points, like the height of the kitchen ceiling. But essentially, it was just too small. Oh, dear. I'm getting the sneaking suspicion that the £135,000 that the boys have to spend may not get them just as much loft as they're hoping for. Still, we are in one of the best places in the country to get them that dream space. If we can't find them a loft here, then something is badly wrong. Throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries, the city was the centre of a huge manufacturing region. Its massive red brick factories and huge cotton mills kept hundreds of thousands of people in work. But although row upon row of Coronation Street style, two up, two down, terraced houses crowded in from all sides, the vast city centre, with all the great architecture, remained largely uninhabited. It wasn't until the early 1990s that things really began to change. Inspired by the success of factory and warehouse conversions in London, developers moved into these fabulous city centre mills and warehouses, creating luxury apartments. People snapped them up and started the migration to the centre of the city. The rest is history. By the end of this year, Manchester city centre will be home to an estimated 10,000 people. Demand for housing is at an all-time high and a third of all apartments are bought before they're even finished. There's a crane on every corner and a scramble to make over every derelict building in town. 
It's almost inconceivable, but the developers have even managed to get their hands on the old Hacienda nightclub. Sacrilege! So, although there's plenty of scope for choice, Colin and Anthony are entering an already booming market. Do you guys come down shopping at weekends? You're too busy looking for houses when we're not here. <laughs> Our search continues. We're looking for the perfect one-bedroom loft. The third viewing is at the Boxworks. That building site is the next thing that we've selected to show Colin and Anthony. A little bit different this time, I don't have a set of keys and there's not even a show flat that we can walk around. Believe it or not, more and more people who want to live in an inner city location are buying things that essentially don't exist yet. The shell is four walls, a ceiling and a floor. The interior is finished only to a basic standard and won't include any fixtures or fittings. Buying one is a fantastic opportunity to create your ideal home, but here are some important points to consider before shelling out. Large empty spaces are deceptive, so measure your room layout on the floor. Get advice from an architect. You don't want to be forced to demolish walls and decks because they don't comply with regulations. Do your sums. It's not cheap to finish your shell. The cost of plastering walls, laying a floor, plumbing, heating and lighting all add up. An average shell space at 1,000 square feet can cost anything between 25 and £50,000 to fit out. Well, Anthony, fantastic model. Most developers have models to help you visualise your future home. But take our advice. Don't even think about parting with any of your hard-earned without having a really good look. It's only when you're out on site that you can start to visualise the living experience. So this is what we're here to see, basically, is the view. And it's not hugely edifying. I mean, if that building was gone and that building was gone and you were just left with the red brick one and the church, and that warehouse, which isn't too bad, that would be fine. Yeah, I think, like you say, the one with the fire escape's nice with the church behind. The other two yeah. buildings, I'm not sure, are going to no. be moved. I think they're staying. Not very good. It's not... Well, that's put paid to that idea. Time for a bit of a recap, I think, and a realistic look at Colin and Anthony's wish list. OK, it's been a very long day, and we haven't got the dream flat. What have we learned? We've learned a lot, and that's the important thing. We Let know what you don't want. Yeah, exactly. And then we can go from that. Don't want noise. You definitely don't want bed decks. <laughs> I think that's a fair <laughs> estimation. Yeah. Yeah.